Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Bud, owner and operator of Dependable Lawn Care here in West Plains, Missouri, bringing you my 2021 lawn mowing setup. This is the setup we'll be using going into the 2021 lawn mowing season. So let's jump right into it. We'll start right here with the muscle that pulls everything around. This is my 2011 F250 four-wheel drive, four-door. Uh, short bed has the 6.2 liter gas engine, which uh, I really like. Went from a diesel a few years back to this big gas engine, and I definitely prefer the gas engine. It's a lot cheaper on maintenance, a lot quieter. The, uh, the truck overall is quite a bit lighter. I'll show you inside the cab real quick. There's really not much to see. Of course, you see my my door magnets, and that's really about all I do for advertising anymore, guys, other than uh, than the stuff I do online. So the this is the XL trim package, so it already has, you know, the vinyl flooring throughout the truck. And then I added some floor mats just to, you know, reduce wear and tear. I also put some seat covers on. And then on top of the seat covers in uh, during the mowing season, we'll actually put a heavy towel over the over the front seats. And that way, you know, we get in here, we're all sweaty and dirty and all that. Those towels absorb that, and then we can take them off every week, wash them, and replace them. So, uh, but yeah, just basic trim package. We keep our safety glasses up there. We usually keep our, uh, our hearing protection and that type of stuff in the back seat, which right now is fairly clean. I've got my, uh, my rigid impact, some sockets that we keep on hand for blade changes. Um, I've, I've never had to change the blades out in the field, but I know it could happen. You know, if you bent one bad enough, you might have to do that. Uh, mainly, I keep it on board for tire changes, uh, truck or trailer. And then I keep my camera equipment back here. Those are the towels, actually, that need to go on the front seats. Um, they're just a, a large, they're like a beach towel size. And then I, I cut two holes in the top edge of the towel and then the the two bars for the headrest go right through that and that's what that's what keeps those in place so as i was saying we'd have our during the mowing season you know we'll have our hearing protection usually in the back seat uh, gloves masks all that type of stuff that we might need keep all that back here and so it's nice having this uh this four-door you know lots and lots of space with having a four-door cab. Then in the toolbox, for you guys that don't know, I'm a full-time firefighter here in West Plains, Missouri. And so my toolbox is a mixture of uh, tools, straps, tie-downs, and my fire gear that I have to keep with me at all times. Somebody's gonna ask where my helmet's at. It's actually under my coat over there. But we have to keep our gear with us because we respond to calls when we're off duty. So we keep the uh, bed of the truck open, and as you can see by the debris in there, that's where we, we throw sticks and things as we're picking up on our properties. Um, anything bigger than sticks, we charge. You know, if we have to cut it up, we charge for it, but we still cut it up, haul it off, and since I burn wood, I just add it to the wood pile. And then we keep a cooler. This is just an Ozark Trail uh, 52 liter, I think. Could be wrong on that. And uh, waters, I like the Monster Hydrates, but uh, just just want to make sure we always have cold drinks on hand to stay hydrated. And then I have the, which you guys have probably seen, but I have the, the B&W drop hitch, which I, I actually turned it upside down because I needed, I actually need a little bit of rise on the hitch more than I needed drop. But I really like that hit. Nice and stout. Works really well. So that is the, the primary mowing trailer. And I'll walk around that real quick. But before I do, this was the trailer that, uh, that really got my business going. This is a 7x16 Landscapers trailer. Uh, I bought this off of an individual that was using it for trash hauling. And uh, obviously I had to fix it up. The floor was floor was rotted out the, the trailer wiring was all shot and uh, so I, I did a lot of work on this thing almost completely rebuilt it other than just the axles but I stripped it down to the frame 
painted everything, did a lot of fab work on it. But anyway, uh, got a toolbox, just a truck toolbox mounted up here on front, which is really handy on an open trailer like this. It gives you, uh, gives you some good storage. I built some tool holders out of a two inch PVC pipe to hold my hand tools. And then I also added this basket on the side and that's where we would put our uh, fuel cans and everything in. And we don't use this trailer a lot. It's uh, really just kind of a backup trailer at this point. At one time it was our primary mowing trailer and then I uh, made the transition to enclosed trailers so that I could keep my equipment out of the weather, which is what I prefer. But this trailer, uh, we'll, we'll hang on to it. It's, it's a good backup. It's also great for when we're doing large cleanups, you know, brush and things like that. Um, it's good for that type, type of stuff. And you'll notice I've got green touch racks. Um, I have those on both of my trailers, but uh, I have the two version three blower racks, and then I have a three position trimmer rack as well on this trailer. And I'll show you I'll show you those a little better on the enclosed trailer. If you guys are looking into tool racks for your trailer, I highly recommend the Green Touch. I've been running these for years now. A green Touch, that is. I had the uh, I had the earlier version, and now I have the newer version. And guys, they're just they're awesome. They're uh, they're quick and easy to use. Uh, keeps your equipment secure. Keeps your equipment from getting tore up. And uh, you know they're just they're just the highest quality you know there's there's a lot of them out there on the market but i I definitely recommend green touch above and beyond everything else uh, this trailer one last thing on it it does have a uh, lift assist on the gate that i built myself you see these gray pvc pipes on top of the rails um, that's actually my my homemade lift assist but it works great um, it's just garage door springs inside those tubes and cables ran to the uh, the gate and it works fantastic I mean you can open and close it with one hand so and that's a that's a pretty good size heavy gate so that's the uh, 7x16 open trailer now we'll move to the this is a 2020 homesteader intrepid uh, enclosed trailer have the 3200 pound axles I custom ordered this guys so everything that's on it is the way I wanted it I've had people ask why I didn't go with heavier axles and that's simply because I'm hauling lawnmowers not cars and the 3200 pound axles are plenty and, you know that's above and beyond what I need for a mowing trailer and I just didn't want the extra weight of heavier axles more expensive tires that type of thing so I went with the 3200 axles one of the big things on this trailer is that uh, I ordered this side ramp door. It's a four foot wide side ramp. And I have just absolutely loved having that. That has been a, a great addition. The other thing that is custom order on it is that it has screwless sides. So if you, if you notice, you look down the sides of the trailer, there are no screws in any of the panels. It's all aircraft glue and uh, I prefer that because I've had other trailers in the past. In fact, I still have I still have one, my 2010. Uh, that's just a tool trailer, but uh, the screws come loose, and I, it doesn't matter what brand it is. Just over time, those screws start to come loose, and then you have issues. So I went with the screwless. It's got a two and a, or two and five eighths ball, and I used the flip foots. Use the flip foots on both of my trailers. I've done a, done some videos on those. Those things are really nice. Eliminates the need for a, for a block. Uh, the other thing on this trailer that you see from the outside is this little access door. And I'll talk about that when we get inside. That's just an access door uh, that you can purchase online for an RV. And uh, in my case, I use it for fuel. But like I said, I'll show you that when we get inside. And I added that myself, as well as uh, two roof vents. And I will point out that I went from a black trailer to a white trailer when I bought this. And guys, there is a huge difference in the, uh, the temperature inside of a, a black trailer versus a white. Uh, I'll never go back to a dark colored trailer after having this white one. Uh, it's so much cooler so much cooler inside which is you know better for you better for your equipment and then one last thing i'll point out on this before we crack it open is that i use the uh, master puck locks 
on all four of the locks on the trailer. And the reason I went with those is because you can't uh, you can't cut them off with bolt cutters or a, uh, a cutting disc. Now you can still get into a trailer. You know anybody that anybody that owns trailers, you know you know that if somebody wants into something bad enough or anything for that matter, if they want into it bad enough, they'll find a way in. But those are about the most secure locks that you can get for when this thing is parked and I'm not home. Let's let's open this thing up and take a look inside. It's open. I'll just show you real quick the way we have the equipment situated. Um, you know, when we're trailering, I get asked from time to time about tie downs and uh, chalk blocks and things like that inside the trailer. It's not required in my area. And honestly, I've never used uh, tie downs or chalk blocks or anything, and I've never needed them. Uh, if your equipment's well maintained and your parking brakes are working as they should, you know, unless you have a catastrophic accident, the uh, the mowers moving around really shouldn't be an issue. Um, there again, that's that's a personal decision. That's the way that I do things. I'm not telling you how to do how to do your thing. You know, you run your business. You do you. But uh, that's just how I do it. I have thought about tie downs or you know even the the wheel locks for like the front caster. But at the end of the day, I don't like it because it would get in the way of, of how, I, how I run my operation. Uh, the way I use this trailer, you know, anything that's on the floor like that's going to eventually get in the way. So, so anyway, that's, uh, that's just how I do that. I do have a, uh, this is a homemade, but I'll show you real quick the locking mechanism that I use for the FW15 and basically it's just a little a little area that the front caster sets in and that keeps the FW15 in place because it does not have a parking brake. So let's uh, let's unload the mowers and I'll show you the, uh, the mowing equipment real quick and then we'll get back in here and I'll show you the rest of the trailer. So these are the mowers. What I have is a 2019 52 inch Z3X mower has the 33 horse Vanguard engine with the oil guard system. This year I put twills on both mowers and then I also run the quick shoot shoot block on both mowers and typically I run X blades depending on the time of the year or what I'm mowing. I'll either run the, the factory blades or I'll run X blades. I'm probably going to run X blades most of this mowing season but uh, Anyway, that's the that's the 52 inch, again 33 horse Vanguard EFI. Both of these mowers I have over 500 hours on, uh, 520 some on this one, and 550 some on this one, and I need to do a 500 hour review on them. But uh, they have been phenomenal machines. Very few issues, and the and the few issues that I have had. You know, I have excellent customer service where I'm at. They're awesome. It's uh, Lynch Equipment here in West Plains, Missouri, and they have just been excellent to work with. In fact, if you're in the West Plains, Missouri area, there's their phone number. Hit them up. They carry Ferris, Skag, and uh, Coyote tractors, and there might even be some other, other things that they carry. I know they have a lot of used equipment that they also carry. But guys, they've just been they've just been great from service to warranty, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I really haven't had many issues. Um, there were just a couple little things early on that we got ironed out right away, and they were great. Always had a loaner mower available if I needed one, and uh, they always always had my mower in and out just as quick as they possibly could get me back in business. So can't say enough about them or the mowers. Just good stuff. And I demoed a lot of different mowers before I landed on the Ferris Z3X. And honestly, I have no regrets whatsoever. I think I made the best choice on, on my equipment purchase. So next up, we have the 61-inch Ferris Z3X. And it has the 37-horse Vanguard EFI and the oil guard system. And if you're not familiar with that, the oil guard system allows you to go 500 hours on an oil change on the engine which is a big deal if you're if you're putting over 
you know, over a couple hundred hours or more on a machine during a season, a uh, typical motor, you're going to have to change the oil every hundred hours. Well, that's, that's downtime and uh, time that you have to spend on maintenance. And on these machines, uh, well, I've gone two seasons and I'm still on my second oil change. So, so that's really great. Uh, twheels, I started running the twheels on both of them, as I said, this last season. And I absolutely love the twheels. Uh, I'll probably never go back to pneumatic tires again. Now these mowers don't have twheels on the front, but they are no flats. And my intention is just to wear those out and once I wear out the no flats, I might try the twheels on the front or I might just stick with the no flats. Um, as you know, the, the twheels are quite a bit more expensive. But this is the 61. Um, I do have these Toro trash bag kits on both mowers. And those are super handy whether, whether you need them for trash. They're, uh, they're just a canvas bag. They come right off so you can dump them. And... Uh, they're just great. Like I said, whether you use them for trash or a lot of times we'll use them just to drop a drink in, uh, drop my phone in there, you know, whatever. They're just great to have a have a spot to drop stuff. So, so those are the two main mowing machines. And then I also have the Ferris FW15. You guys see a lot of videos on it. Um, this is the swivel caster model. Still has the, the factory front casters on it I never did uh, I never did change them I know some guys had some issues with getting those bent but I never have so I just stuck with the uh, the factory front forks and then recently I added the quick shoot I haven't even really got to use that yet this season so I'm kind of looking forward to uh, trying out the quick shoot but the FW15 is a 32 inch hydro mower uh, has the Honda GVX, I'm sorry, GXV 390 OHV, and then I added an hour meter, and as you can see, um, I just have 31.2 hours on it, so, you know, not a great deal of push mowing, but, man, this makes light work of the push mowing that I do have. Now, on the mower, I run the factory blades. I've done a lot of videos on this mower with different blade setups, mulch kit, you know, bagger, the factory bagger, side catcher, uh, just all kinds of things. And I really enjoy, I really enjoy this mower. And that's one of the reasons why I do so many videos with it. But uh, it's just all around, no matter what setup you have on it, just an all around great mower. And uh, I really enjoy it. And it's been a great addition to my business. So those are the, those are the money makers, the machines that the machines that cut the grass and uh, get the work done and do it very, very professionally. So let's jump inside the trailer and we'll take a look in here at the equipment that we carry. So we'll start right here on the right. And before I get into, into everything, I painted the walls and the floor myself. Uh, the trailer didn't come that way. I'm sure I could have added that if I wanted to pay for it, but I'd just as soon do something like that myself. So I painted the walls white with an eggshell paint, um, an exterior eggshell paint. And then I painted the floor in a light gray floor paint. It's a, uh, uh, like a decking type of paint. And both have held up really well. The uh, decking paint isn't very old. I didn't, I didn't get that done until close to the end of the season. And, uh, it's, dirty right now from grass stains and stuff but but uh, I just wanted to do that to protect the materials inside the trailer and I also when I ordered this trailer I ordered it with half inch plywood on the sides instead of three eighths or quarter inch because I wanted that extra stability for mounting things to the side of the trailer now I generally use the studs in everything that I mount but there are some spots where you just don't have a stud where you need it and the uh, the half inch plywood gets the job done. So I built in these shelves right before I painted it and those have been just absolutely fantastic use of this Vino's. As you can see I've got a lot of miscellaneous equipment and tools, uh, the smaller stuff up there 
and it allows me to keep everything organized and uh, have it where I need it when I need it. So I purchased last year the trailer aid. This is a uh, trailer jack for a dual axle or a triple axle trailer to change out a tire. So if you're not sure what that is, uh, look it up. Those are pretty cool. And I've got my spare tire mounted right here, mounted right there on the wall. So um, again, I, I talked about having the impact and the sockets in my truck. And uh, I have had to change trailer tires. So it's good to have that on board. You'll notice right here, I've got two of the multi-tool cages by Green Touch, uh, trailerracks.com. And that's where I keep my chainsaws. So I've got a, uh, a 562 XP Husqvarna with a 20 inch bar. And then I have a little And then I have a 18 bolt Ryobi with a 10 inch bar. And let me tell you guys, that little, that little cordless saw has been so freaking handy. Um, we have one customer in particular this year, this past year rather, that uh, they have a dead tree in their yard. And every time we come over, it seemed like they would have a limb down. And this is what we used most of the time. And we're talking, you know, limbs anywhere from four inches to six inches in diameter. And uh, we use this little saw to do all that cutting, you know, because it's super quiet, it's super light, and uh, surprisingly the battery goes for a long time on uh, cutting time with this little chainsaw. So, I, I like it so much that I've actually been thinking about getting the, uh, the next size up that's a, it's either a 14 or a 16 inch bar with a 40 volt. So, you know, I, I have a few Ryobi tools and and I'm really big on my on my Ryobi tools, you know, the they're not they're not perfect for everybody. If you're using something every day, you probably want to purchase something a little bit more uh, commercial use than Ryobi, but for me, something that I'm using, you know, frequently but not every day, the Ryobi tools really work well for me. So, I have a whole lineup of Ryobi tools and I like all of them. So moving on down, I've got two of the Green Touch tool hangers and then one of the uh, Home Depot, I believe this is a Husky hanger. And that's where I keep all my tools organized, my hand tools that is. Um, I've also got spare belts for all of the mowers and uh, the decks and I even have a couple belts up there for the uh, the blowers on the leaf vacuums. So just good to have that stuff on hand. All right here, uh, this is the reason for the, the little access door on the side. I have a 15 gallon John Dow Industries fuel cell up here, or fuel tank. And then down below I have my two five gallon regular gas, one two and a half mix, and then my oil for my uh, chainsaw bars, my chainsaw oil. And with that access door, I can pull up to a pump. I can fill up my 15 gallon tank, my fuel tanks, both Z3X mowers, as well as the FW15. So in one stop, I can fuel up everything. And that's usually all the fuel we need to get us through the entire week of mowing. So that, is a, that has been really great this past year, having that just a, a one stop fill up, you know, been great so moving on down uh, have two Husqvarna backpack blowers in the version 3 green touch racks this is the 580 BTS and this is the 570 BTS uh, there's not a lot of difference between the two the main difference is that the 570 is a little bit lighter and a little bit quieter versus the 580 but honestly they both do about the same amount of work. If there's any difference in how much work you can do with one or the other, I can't tell personally. I can I can pick up one backpack blower and blow leaves, stop, go pick up the other one, and go right back to where I left off, and I really cannot tell the difference, except that, like I said, this one's a little bit lighter and a little bit quieter. And so if I ever wear this 580 out, I'll probably get a 570 to replace it. Although um, I'm going on my fourth year with this backpack blower and it's still holding up great. So no complaints 
there at all. Um, Husqvarna is the, the brand that I run on all of my all of my mowing equipment, stick equipment, that type of thing, and uh, really like it. So this is the Green Touch weed eater spool holder, and it has a built-in cutoff tool. It's another one of those things that's just really handy. I've got it right back here on the back of the trailer, so it's quick access when you run out of weed eater string. And then, of course, keep uh, traffic cones back here to throw out when we park on the roadside. Now, most of my properties are residential. In fact, last year I got away from all of my commercials. Usually when we're parked, it's on a, a residential street, so traffic isn't too bad, but we still want to play it safe. So I won't go into every single model, but I, I run the Husqvarna commercial series uh, trimmers and stick equipment. So I have the Husqvarna edger with the Darwin's grip. I really, really like the Darwin's grip on the edger. We, we tried that, little squirrel sneaking by. <laughs> Uh, we've we tried that on the weed eaters and and the way the husk barn and weed eaters are balanced and everything We were just more comfortable using the factory handles on the trimmers But uh, but Darwin's grips are great and on that edger. It's a backbreaker if you don't have it. So anyway um, Got two of the commercial series husk barn trimmers uh, One combi tool which that is not a commercial series. That's a homeowner um 128 CD I believe and I use it for for hedge trimming where the commercial hedge trimmer doesn't reach and then I also use it for the chainsaw attachment so it's already got this three foot extension on and then you add the chainsaw attachment which, which gives it another couple feet and I can reach about 12 to 13 feet up for uh, tree trimming so that's really handy to have if I uh, if I ever wear it out or when I wear it out I'll probably replace it with the uh, commercial series, but it's been a great, great little combi tool. And then as I mentioned, the Husqvarna hedge trimmer. I uh, really, really like the hedge trimmer. The only complaint I have about it is that it doesn't have an articulating head, and uh, having an articulating head would really be nice on this in certain situations. You know, 90% of the time, I just need a straight hedge trimmer, but uh, there, are, there have been times when it would be nice to be able to pivot the head on that to get different angles. So that's the stick equipment, and that is the four-position green touch trimmer rack with uh, additional uh, hangers on the bottom for the hedge trimmer. The only downside to that is that I made the, I made the hangers on the bottom myself, and it doesn't lock. So that's the only downside to that, but all of the other... All of the other you know, trimmers have, have a lock, a singular lock. So when you push this padlock in right here, it locks down the whole system and you have to have a key to unlock it before you can get anything out of it. So again, very safe, very secure. Uh, just a big fan of the green touch racks. Next we have this combi ladder. This is a 16 foot um, folding extending combination ladder. Uh, this was this was one of the early ones. Uh, this was back when they first started to carry them. Uh, so this is the Costco World's Greatest. And honestly, guys, that thing has been phenomenal. Um, I use it quite a bit for shrub trimming and also for uh, climbing up on customers' roofs to blow out gutters. We do that quite a bit in the fall. And uh, that, that ladder gets a pretty good workout and is held up fantastic. And... On mounting, I just have a, a D-loop screwed right into the stud on the top and then down on the bottom and one strap to hold it in place. And then, of course, it sits on the, on the fender, so that works out really good. Next up, we've got two Green Touch. This is the Extreme Pro Series um, racks that hold backpack sprayers. And in them, I have two Chapin... 20 volt backpack sprayers, uh, four gallon, and uh, those just have worked out really well for me. Uh, worked out so well that after I'd had this one for a couple years, I purchased another one, I'm still using the old one, and and have a uh, a new one also. So we do a lot of uh, a lot of spraying along fence lines and things like that. You know, just just weed killer, and uh, it's nice to have two of those where I can have them both filled up 
and as I use one up, I've got the next one to start into, and then at the end of the day, or end of the week, whichever, we can fill them back up and ready to go. So guys, that's the, uh, that's the interior of the enclosed trailer. That's all. So again, that's our, our 2021 lawn mowing setup. As always, guys, I really appreciate you checking back into the channel and uh, seeing what we're putting out. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And that, uh, that helps us out a lot with knowing what kind of content you like and what to put out for you in the future. As always, guys, get out there and make some money, and we'll catch you on the next one.